All right, guys, now welcome back to the Wesley PCs. Here we are today with this computer, which has a 360mm AIO, an i7 10700K, 32 gigs of the worst memory you'll ever see, and a Z490 Asus Strix. Now, here we are with the overclocking guide. Now, first thing you want to do is enable the XMP of your RAM. Generally, again, it will depend, but on ASUS, you have to choose here. You go here and you choose XMP1. Now, once you've done that, you want to basically unlock the limits, the actual voltage and power limits. You want to unlock the power limits. You go here and you go on enabled uh, ASUS multicore enhancement removal limits. Now, on the motherboards, which don't have these features, here is how you do it. You basically uh, go into your BIOS and find the settings which, which says something like CPU power management or something like that. And then you just, on the core current limit, long duration power, package power limit, time window, and basically everything that says limit, you just go in there and just basically go hit all nines, hit enter and it will just slap the maximum for you. Again, this is how I would do it if I did not have that feature there. This is the old school way of doing it, so just copy that. Uh, and this is very important because many people don't show you this and they will hinder your performance. But anyway, we don't have that, that, that much time, let's get into it. On the actual overclock. Okay, now once you've done this, you want to remove everything that says spread spectrum. So like BCLK spread spectrum, just disable it. And then you have like um, this one, if you have an ASUS motherboard, disable it. Uh, again, this is not very important, but just do it. Then on your VRM settings, which is like the, the load line calibration thing, basically here it will tell you that on ASUS, ASUS, the first one is the one with the highest vid group. Now you want to set something which is in the middle, but towards the minimum vid group. So in this case, seven is the minimum vid group as written here. So you want to use five. Okay, so just go on five, hit it. Okay, and then again, you want to unlock the current capability of your CPU. Again, depending on your motherboard, this unlocking part, don't bother with it too much, but the load line calibration is important. The important thing is XMP, load line calibration, and then as I will show you now, the actual settings. So. Uh, you want to set your CPU core ratio, okay? This one is called the same everywhere. Sync by all core, and then we want to get a 5 GHz overclock, so just hit 50. I'm giving you stable settings that you don't have to test. Those will work on every CPU out there. So if you want to just copy them, they will work. Then after, I will tell you what you can do if you want more performance and you want to test. So as of right now, user specify, hit an AVX offset of 1. Basically, when running AVX, uh, it, we, we will have an effective 4.9 overclock instead of a 50. Now, if you want to test it, the same settings will work on the 95% of the CPUs without offset. So you, you can test it, but this will work on everyone. So now let's go ahead. Okay, just go down here. CPU cache. Now, this is very important. Most people don't set this minimum cache ratio you want to set this to 46 because it's three more than the clock uh, and then maximum 47 so if you go without offset on the avx just put 47 and 47 now here we want to go down and if you have an asus motherboard disable this one uh, it's useless but like it doesn't change anything if you disable it or not now go here and set cpu core cache voltage on manual okay and now you want to go on the CPU core voltage override and just hit 1.35, okay? Now this is gonna work, this is pretty safe. This is gonna be, uh, like the CPU is gonna heat up quite a bit. So you will have to check if your temperatures are all right. If your temperature are not all right, I would not recommend a five years overclock, okay? Just saying it, but if you put this one and your temperature is not all right and you are like but i really want a five years overclock you can lower this voltage to like 1.3 okay just 1.3 to 5 try it first and then 1.3 try it and then if i mean at that if you are lucky it can work if you have a very good cpu and then you could like put two offset uh, in the avx and that will allow you to basically get stable uh, with a little bit less voltage, but then again, it's an effective 4.8 overclock, so I wouldn't do it. Now go down here, 
VCC IO. If you don't have it, don't sell it. If you have it, set 1.2. And this is your overclock. We are done. You can close the video. But if you want to hear a couple more interesting things, stay in the video. Basically, you want to, like, the VCC IO and system agent voltage, they're not as important. Okay. Um, they are for RAM and cache purposes. One is the memory controller in the CPU, the other one still related to RAM basically. Now, why are we setting them? Because on most motherboards, if you just set the XMP, it will shoot up the voltage, which is not going to be healthy for your CPU, uh, but it's also going to increase the temperature. So this is going to get us a little bit more thermal headroom. Now, if you, like, you could again tune those, the tuning range goes from 1.15 if you're very lucky to 1.25 if you're very unlucky um, if you're running extremely high memory kits you can go as high as 1.3 don't go higher than 1.3 personal recommendation on the cpu core voltage personal recommendation i wouldn't run higher than 1.4 for daily usage if you're running 1.4 make sure your temperature is in check and make sure that your load line calibration is low if you want to tune it a bit more the load line calibration again um Basically, the more V droop you have, um, it's, it's a bit better for stability. Once you've reached stability, you can try to lower it. I would not recommend going lower than four. Like always keep a middle one. Don't go lower than middle one. Now, if you have a very high-end cooling system, you can do this thing, okay? If you have like active cooling on your VRMs, you can do this. You can uh, basically go on CPU power phase and set extreme. Uh, this will use all the phases at the same time. It's gonna be very inefficient. You're gonna consume more power, but it's gonna give you a little bit more stability. Very little though, very little. And also, if you wanna get higher overclocks, like let's say you want to go for five gigahertz without offset, or you wanna go for 5.1, you can go as high as six. I never use the, the absolute top voltage, uh, top uh, LLC load line calibration setting because it will overshoot uh, with the CPU. So basically you set 1.35, it's gonna give you like 1.4 that's not very healthy i would not recommend it uh, but if you're doing it for benchmark or test purposes you can do it this is uh, a tutorial for daily overclock if you want me to do tutorials for competition i can do them i just don't think many people would be interested uh, if you follow this this far <laughs> i appreciate it man you probably uh, understand a bit better how your motherboard works i hope that with the video being this long have many people quitting on it but i figured i'd give just a whole uh, tour of what you can do on this BIOS and in general on this platform. So anyway, see you in the next one guys And thanks a lot and let me know how the overclock goes by the way If you're having troubles with stability, just drop a comment. Sometimes I answer late, but I promise I answer so Peace. Bye